Hi friends, we're just gonna jump straight into this tutorial today. Basically, I'm gonna show you how I took this Halloween severed leg prop and I turned it from this into this. So I'm just gonna show you step by step how I created all these wounds and made it look so much better. It looks way more realistic and how I'm going to be using it in my decorations at home. Of course, you want to start out first with your leg. I'm also using jumbo cotton balls, cosmetic wedges. These are just sponges and I'm using LA Colors nail tips for the toenails. You also need some liquid latex. I'm using this one from Mayron, and I'm using some cream paint palettes. One is from Wet n Wild, and one is the Master Bruise Wheel from Ben Nye. And of course, some scab blood, and I'm also going to be using some ripped up leftover tissue paper I have. I have already sized out the fingernail tips that I'm going to be using for the toenails. You just want to make sure that the fingernail tip is as wide as the toenail, and then you're going to trim it down to look more like a toenail and less like a fingernail. And as you can see, the prop already has an indent of a toenail, so it gives you a really good idea of what that shape should look like. Now I only picked out four fingernail tips and that's because this third toe here is a little bit deformed, so I'm going to use that to my advantage and make it look like the whole toenail is missing. Don't be afraid to be creative. Let's go ahead and shape these fingernails. So again, I'm making sure that that's the correct size. And then you wanna trim off a lot of that length since toenails are not as long as fingernails. And then I'm rounding out those square edges as toenails tend to be more rounded on the edges rather than square. And then here I'm using Gorilla Glue to glue the nail tip on. I did use this for the hand prop I did. However, I felt like it took a really long time to dry and I just didn't have the patience for it. So I switched over to Crazy Glue and that worked a lot better. Repeat this process for all nails. This is what the foot looks like with all of the toenail tips done and I cut a hole where the third toe is. Next go in with your liquid latex and your tissue and I'm going to spread that liquid latex all around the opening of the wound like the outside of it and this is where I'm going to be placing the tissue to look like ripped skin. As you can see the pieces of tissue I'm using are very jagged and ripped up looking. You want it to look this way so it mimics ripped skin. You don't want perfectly clean edges and then I'm gently pressing that tissue into the kind of tacky liquid latex now so it can stick. And get a little bit more of that liquid latex on your sponge and now we're going to dab that all around the tissue on the inside and outside. This is going to strengthen the tissue and give it more of a skin-like finish so when we paint later the paint can stick. And this is what it should look like once you're done layering up that latex. You just wanna leave this for a few hours to dry down until it turns clear. And this is what that looks like once everything is dried down. As you can see in certain areas, I did layer some extra latex and picked at it to create these sort of extra wounds and open skin areas. And it's just gonna add more to our leg in the end. Next, we're going to build up this area up here. Right now it looks very flat, but we want it to be more 3D, like that leg was really ripped off. So we need a little bit more fleshy bits kind of hanging out out here. So we're going to be using our cotton and just rip that cotton apart, make it look very jagged and PC, and then go in with your liquid latex like we did for the tissue areas, dab a little on, and start to press your cotton into those areas. You wanna make sure this cotton is fully saturated with that liquid latex, so just keep pressing it in and adding more latex on top till that cotton is all the way soaked through with latex. As you're placing that cotton, just make sure to pull some pieces out so it's kind of stringing out and um, kind of hanging out there to give it more of an effect. And this is what it looks like once I'm done pulling those pieces out. Now here is everything fully dried down. As you can see, most of the white disappears and you can see that the latex is pretty dry at this point. You can also speed up this process by using a hairdryer, but I just let it sit overnight and we're just about ready for paint now. Going in with the Ben Nye Bruise Wheel, I'm gonna begin working with the toenails. So we're going to take this yellow shade on a brush and start painting in the toenail with some yellow. Um, and then patting it out. This is just going to give that nail some discoloration. Um, you're not gonna have perfectly white manicured toes if you're dead, so make sure to give it a little color. And then I'm using this brown shade from the Wet n Wild palette and adding that onto the cuticle just to give it more of that dirty nail look. 
Mix these two shades from the Wet n Wild palette to create a skin tone color that matches the leg and begin to buff that color all over the tissue areas. You wanna cover up that white and give it more of that skin tone finish. So make sure you really buff it in there because there is a lot of texture and jagged edges and you want to make sure you're covering it up and giving it a really good base before we go in with our extra paint. Repeat this process around all of the open wounds that you have. You wanna really cover up that tissue. Make sure to get underneath the skin a little bit as well because again, you wanna cover up all the white showing and blend it up towards the leg as well. You wanna blend it into the rest of the skin tone and this gives it more of a seamless look. Take one of those cosmetic wedge sponges and pick out bits just like this. You're trying to get rid of those square edges and this is going to make your bruises look a little bit splotchier and more natural. So go in with that yellow shade and purple and I begin to build up the bruising. You can see that makes it look really splotchy and it looks really good. As you're working through this process, make sure to take a little bit of that color and spread it onto different areas of the leg just to further add some more discoloration and more bruising. Then I'm going in with the two darkest red shades and building up that color, but you wanna focus the darker shades more towards the inside of the wound. And again, just splotching it around all over the place, but you want the most color to be towards the inside of the wound at this point. Now going in with the two darkest shades on a brush, I'm going to be getting underneath that skin flap and just coloring all of that in to make it look really seamless in there. This area here was actually not a part of the original prop, but you can create extra wounds by layering liquid latex. And once that dries down, you can pick holes into it. And this kind of looks more like ripped skin or some sort of abrasion. And then I'm just filling in the holes with um, some of that red color and then dabbing my sponge around to give it some more irritation. Here, I'm going to be filling in all of the cotton areas with a red paint. So this is a little bit of a tedious process because the cotton has so much texture to it, but just take your time and make sure you cover up all of that white cotton showing. This is what everything should be looking like at this point, and I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. We have a lot of discoloration going on, and that bruising really helps to blend the tissue into the skin, so you can't tell where you laid down that tissue earlier, and it looks like it was part of the original prop. We just need to work on the toes a little bit more, so going in with the two darkest red shades, I'm filling in the hole where it looks like the toenail was ripped out, and we're gonna build up more discoloration from here. Going back in with that sponge, I'm creating some more pooling blood, and if your toe is ripped out, you would have a lot of blood splattered around, so we just want to make sure we get that effect in there. I'm so sorry I'm completely off screen here, but that's what I'm doing. Taking a red cream paint on my brush, I'm adding this to the cuticle, and I'm really getting it underneath that toenail. Realistically, if you have blood all over your feet, you're going to get some underneath your toenail, and this kind of makes it look like the blood is pooling underneath your toes as well. And you want to add more paint to the surrounding toes from where you have that toenail ripped out, because if you did lose your toenail there, you would have a lot of blood splatter on those areas. All right, this step is one of my favorites. We're going to be scooping out some scab blood. I'm using the end of my brush, and this is where everything really starts to come to life and pull together. So taking big scoops of that scab blood, I'm spreading it all on the inside of the openings, and then I kind of smudge it all around the outside as if some of the blood on the outside of the wound is starting to scab up as well. Uh, be creative with it, I guess. Uh, this is supposed to be messy. The messier, the better. And repeat this process on the inside of all of your wounds. And here I'm just adding some of that scab blood on the opening of where the toenail used to be and kind of stuffing it in there. I thought this part was just really satisfying, so I added it in. And make sure to spread the blood around on the neighboring toes. This is what it looks like once that scab blood has dried down, and I love the way that scab blood dries down because it stays looking shiny, which makes it look kind of fresh, I guess. Um, it keeps that shiny, bloody look to it, which just keeps it looking realistic. And now we're going to take the bottle of blood, and I'm going to pour this on the top, and this will leave us with really awesome streams of blood coming down the leg where that leg would have been ripped off. My table starts to look like a total murder scene, but it's all right. To keep it a little bit more contained, I'm using the cap here and pouring the blood into the wounds, spreading that around. You wanna let that blood kind of stream down. And then I'm gonna use my fingers just because 
I don't know, it looked good. So I tapped my fingers all around in that blood and spread it all over the place. You want this to be really messy. Again, the messier, the better. And at this point, you're basically done and everything starts to look really good. All right, friends, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. And this is how our severed leg came out. Basically from here, I'm just going to clear coat the leg to give it a little extra protection. And for my use, I'm going to be inserting hooks at the top of the leg and hanging these from a tree outside. I would recommend something like this as an indoor prop because of the weather and things like that. You wanna make sure that you don't ruin the prop, but I'm just gonna see how it goes. If you do want to create any sort of wounds like this for your Halloween costume, let's say you're going to be a zombie, you can follow the same exact steps I showed you in this video to create any sort of look like that. Um, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I post more Halloween decoration ideas along with some makeup tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.